Hello, Bill Kladze here, back with another Modern Cube. This time we'll try to stay away from aggro because I think you can do some really cool stuff in this cube, just keeping in mind what's powerful and having something to do at every stage in the game. So the best fixing in the format comes with these fetch lands. They're really high picks because of that. You're also looking for the, the big payoffs that kind of stand out above the rest. Uh, Terastodon is a nice ramp payoff, but is limited to that archetype. Then we have some counter magic to back it up. Uh, Thrag Tusk has a strong effect. But out of this pack, there's nothing that stands out as a, a real, you know, premium finisher or super efficient thing that's going to be better than fixing. So let's take Marsh Flats and see where that goes. We've, we're passing to the Hunter. Nick Hamon, piece of toast. Rip Hat, Iscariot Dev Mermji, Wow Mom LOL, and Ilenfelt. Um, point of fact, uh, piece of toast and Ilenfelt uh, have real creative differences. All right, let's see. We've got Falcon Wrath Aristocrat in the Rakdos Aggro deck very solid and oftentimes going mono red you can kind of splash black and have this as a powerful card there i'm always tempted by these noble hierarch cards because they are so good in ramp uh, and i do get pulled into that often enough lingering souls is another good one here cryptic command if you're heavy blue is pretty nice but yeah, in this pack, I'm looking... Black Sun Zenith is a nice sweeper. I'm looking at Lingering Souls versus Noble Hierarch. They're both pretty solid. Um, Lingering Souls is just going to be good all around, just good value. Noble Hierarch's more ramp. The nice part about having a bunch of flying tokens is they pressure Planeswalker as well, and those are the, the things you need to worry about. Um, more than anything. Ooh, another flooded strand here. Okay, so again, nothing that really pays you off. I'd say the best payoff card here is Goblin Rabble Master. Insane amounts of damage early. Kind of fragile. Usually at least makes a token, and that can stick around for a bit. Hall of Triumph is maybe the best anthem effect for mono red, but can also support other colors. I'm just going to go with the fixing here. Stay open. And this is what we're staying open for, Nickel Bolas. Giant spells that dominate the late game. Uh, if you have enough time, Gonti can get a lot of value, and there are a few ways to copy it, bounce it, and flicker it. Just play with your opponent's deck. But it, it's mana intensive, because not only do you have to pay 4 for this 2-3, you're also having to pay the mana for whatever you capture from your opponent's deck. I'm going to go with Nickel Bolas here which also lets you play with your opponent's deck, but doesn't require a, a mana investment beyond the first the first little bit. What's the most uh, fetch lands I've had? And these are good ones, just Esper, Esper fetches here. And if we can pick up some kind of red dual land, we'll be all set for Nicol Bolas. Uh, ambition, ambition's cost? Cards like this don't really appeal to me. I guess it's kind of the black version of um, draw three but losing three life's annoying, and you can't point this at your opponent. So Duplicant's a good one here. I'm going to take Polluted Delta, though. Look at this mana base. That's nice. Two Khans lands and one Zendikar land. Harmonize is the green version of that draw three. Also a powerful one. All right, this pack. Olivia. That's a good one. We don't get a dual land here. Lightning Bolt is always going to be good. But Olivia just takes over the game, if given time. And it's already kind of good on its own. We've got a few little Lingering Souls tokens. Just a nice card. Negate, another powerful one. Two mana counter magic, kind of hard to come by. A little weird between the two of those, since we're better set up to be blue than red, based on our lands. And Negate is good counters planeswalkers and things. What do you think? I wish I could 
survey, close between these two. I'm going to go with negate here. Just gives us that thing to do in the early game and that way to protect our planeswalkers. Hallowed Fountain, nice. The second best uh, cycle of fixing are the Shocklands because they can come in untapped and speed is so important for setting up uh, whereas the uh, cycle lands, which are maybe the third best type of fixing in this format, they always come in tapped. And you don't usually want to cycle them because, I mean, unless it's obvious that you should. But yeah, I'll take that. Ooh, here we have another Esper colored planeswalker. This one is more aggressive than than you'd really like, and it kind of ultimates four turns after it comes in. Let's see, uh, three turns after it comes in, something like that. And then you can kind of do some cool stuff. Maybe I'd rather have Jace here, solid card draw, kind of the three mana draw three of the, of the format, although it does take some time. Terastodon wheels, other people aren't interested in that effect. Murderous cut is a, a super efficient removal spell. We do kind of have the the lands for it. I'm gonna go for that. Uh, dissipate can help deal with things that haven't been cast yet, but we need a way to, to kill off some early creature, and the fetch lands also help pay for this delve. All right, Falcon Wrath Aristocrat is back. Sulphurous Springs to Fairy. If we start getting well into blue mana here. Pestermite into the royal. It looks like we are becoming kind of heavy blue. So into the royal becomes nice for that reason. And we might even be able to make body double work. This is what you're doing for reanimation. You're doing a clone of a creature in a graveyard. That's about as well as you can do. Sleight of hand, another cool one, but maybe we can do something with body double. Ambition's cost is back. Lava Claw reaches. I guess I'll take that. Mutavault. Battlefield Forge. Yeah, Mutavault. I like having access to it. It's unclear how much white and red we'll actually need. Still looking for a red plus any Esper color uh, fetch land. Or um, dual land, rather, so we can fetch it. Ooh, Elspeth is a nice one. Tamio has got to be the best card here. Then Staff of Nin, which is similar to a Planeswalker in that it kind of draws you a card every turn and pings stuff. But yeah, I think Tamio is going to be the most benefit for our deck that we can get out of this pack. Bonfires need a lot of, a lot of flashy cards here. Elspeth, powerful if you're more into white. But yeah, let's take the Moon Sage. Tap stuff down every turn, protects itself. What else do we have? The fixing is for green, which is not what we need right yet. Kolagon's Command, a powerful one. Mer Battle Sphere, that's a good one to use with body double if we can ever get it into the graveyard or just hard cast it. Scatter to the Winds could also be the pick here. We're getting heavy into blue, and it's nice to have something to to protect your stuff with. Shoot, I'm gonna go with Scatter here. I'm not even sure I want to try to make Body Double work. Might just be too much, too much going on with that. Bloodline Keeper can win on its own. Phantasmal Image copies the best thing out there. Let's see, but it only copies creatures and there's gonna be a lot of Planeswalkers you need to deal with. I'm gonna go with the Bloodline Keeper this time. Ooh, there we go. Dragonlord Silmgar. Glad to be in these colors seeing a card like this. We need some stuff to do early, and Everflowing Chalice would be a nice way to ramp into to all this late game. But we can't take that over Silmgar here. Oh, a couple good options. Now we've got Crystal Shard, which is nice against your opponent's creatures and with your own creatures. Uh, if they have entered the battlefield effects or you want to protect them. Spellskite, 
defends planeswalkers and sensor kind of a cool one uh late game it's never dead it just cantrips early game you can force spike something when you have extra mana and i really like that here Ooh, shell dock isle getting expensive stuff out for way cheaper than you ought to we already have a lot of things that could be good to get down in the late game like um, planeswalker silumgar even something like teferi you just tuck it away and then really cheap later and because your deck is 40 cards it's so easy to get your library under 21 cards which is what you need to to get that hideaway it's kind of random what you're going to pick up with the shell dock isle but usually you'll get something good um, and i think you get to even play lands that you put under it you may play the exiled card right the keyword there is play and not cast because you can't cast the lands uh, let's see cyclonic rift that's another one that plays double duty you've got early game two mana bounce whatever late game it just resets the opponent's board completely so that is a nice one to pick up trophy mage god take this card but don't start it in the main unless you have something to get with it dungeon geists might be good here gray merchant only really if you're heavy black devotion heavy black uh, whip flare whip flare could be important to survive against some early stuff but we're not super red to begin with like it'd be hard to see siding that in when dungeon geist does almost as good of a job of defending and sometimes it locks up something pretty annoying like a titan what now still trying to avoid some of the the more red things victim of night powerful removal looter ill core also good better if you're trying to assemble like specific combinations of cards because here it almost doesn't matter what we get we're just trying to draw lots of cards uh, so more of a combo card but i guess it's fine here then consuming vapors the fact that we gain life off this pretty powerful and there's a lot of random big creatures out there that it can pick off Kologon's command if we were a little heavier red this is hyper efficient it gives you so many options so many ways to survive like if you pick off an artifact creature and a small creature then you've already got a ton of value that said we'll pass it on here take a mana tithe Sorry, Frost Links. It's just not, it's just not Frost Links uh, season. Modern Cube. Okay, Vivid Grove, nice fixing. Even if you're not green, and Rune Scarred Demon is something to do later in the game. Get any card we could want, and I guess I'll go with that here. Another thing we could look at for the body double. Scattered Groves. Not much left here. Maybe Angel is our best bet. And a couple neat things here. I'll go with Threads, since that gives us a way to, like, two for one, an aggressive opponent, steal their tiny creature. And it's nice that it doesn't have a restriction on the power of the creature, so they can't pump it and shed the Threads. It just has to have the conver ah, converted mana cost. Two or less. Yeah, stealing an Elf or a... A tiny creature is really what you're looking to do there. Blood Crypt. I don't want to take Inferno Titan, although that is the kind of late game spell you want, because we don't have the red fixing yet. No artifact ramp that can help us out there. Uh, we're just relying on this land base, and we don't have the thing to fetch yet, so Blood Crypt is a high priority here, and we'll just take that. Distended Mindbender is cool. I find that my decks are usually a little too controlling for this because they won't have enough creatures to get rid of i mean a token is fine you can pay seven for that let's see what we're doing here now here's a pack soren grim nemesis crazy powerful it can kill off other planeswalkers that's important kills creatures gains you life and the plus one wins the game on its own um, not to mention draw some cards. I really like that here. Ralzarek's better if you have some 
artifact ramp or some reason to untap something. Jace is always going to be good, but I'm going to go with Soren here. Jace is a little underwhelming with counter magic since it can't flashback counter magic on your opponent's turn unless you've got Teferi out or some weird thing that doesn't exist in this cube. All right, careful consideration for this pack. Mind control. Here it is. Love this art. They did a good job of balancing the the colors and make it making it easy enough to understand at a at a glance. Yeah, people or artists get really detailed on some of the art and it's hard to see what's even going on, but but this is detailed and easy to understand, easy on the eyes and powerful. Steal your opponent's creature. Just one more mana than you'd get in Legacy Cube, but still worth it. Ah, Progenitor Mimic. That's going to be a little too hard to splash in this um, deck, but that's another good payoff that just takes over games. So what are we looking at here? We've got seven lands. I'm separating kind of the fetches and what's fetchable. So 22 cards, almost a deck. I'm thinking of cutting Angel of Serenity, a little hard to cast. Fetted Pools, nice one to fetch up. Una, powerful in the late game. Can win on its own, it takes a few turns to really mill your opponent. But you can get some fairies along the way. That might come back. Commit to Memory is another cool one. I'm going to go with this Fetted Pools, because we don't have a blue-black fetch yet. Or, sorry, not a fetch, a a target for the fetch. Coalition Relic, there we go. That is just a great way to ramp up to six mana, because it ramps straight from three to six. Not a ton of cards do that. And it fixes our colors if that becomes a problem, although it doesn't look like it will be. And, you know, gets up to Nicol Bolas and Runescarred Demon. So Cube All-Star, Coalition Relic, among the best fixing you can ask for. Prismatic Lens. This should really draw you a card when it's coming in. I can't see a reason to play it. Uh, Celestial Colonnade, however, is it's just great. I mean, it slows you down a bit, but we don't have a turn one play anyway in this poor deck. Gives us something to do when they when they wrath or only threats away. Just attack for four. And it defends your Planeswalkers, too. You just leave this thing back. You have mana up. You have counter magic up. Plays, plays all the positions well. Are those little people? I don't know if you can make out the art, but there's these little pillars in the air, and it looks like little figures on top of them. Not doing so hot. Spell Queller. Bitter Blossom, which can sometimes be more of a burden than a, than a boon. Icy Manipulator is always good. A little expensive, but once you get it going, it's hard removal. I like Spell Queller, I like Bitter Blossom. Spell Queller can be super annoying to play against. And Bitter Blossom is a nice threat to get going early. Nine, so we're looking at 22 here. I really don't know about this pick. I'm gonna go with Bitter Blossom, but that could be wrong. We need, or we'd like an effect like this that can just win as long as we don't get too low of life. Wow, that's a late Consecrated Sphinx. And a snap pick out of this pack. You just don't need this in play for very long before it completely dominates. They kill it, and it's just still a three for one. It plays really well with counter magic. All right, Devour Flesh. Sure, you can give your opponent back some life. Or heck, sacrifice your own creature to gain life, to <laughs> protect you from your own Bitter Blossom. I'm going to take Devour Flesh here. I'm going to cut Looter Ill Core. Uh, Ralzeric does work well with Coalition Relic. You can actually get multiple charge counters on it by untapping it. That's kind of neat, but nothing, nothing crazy. Ah, that's tough. Maybe Hexmage is going to be better against um, opposing Planeswalkers. Inquisition. Spectre. Yeah, just naming cards here. Kakusho, kind of 
not what we want. It's more like a living nightmare card where you sack it and bring it back. Recurring nightmare, not living nightmare. Mixing my card names up here, living death, living end, and the nightmare. All right, what are we doing here? So we've got one too many cards, I would say. Negate, which one of these cards is gonna, gonna get cut? Not the murderous cut. Possibly dungeon geists. More than likely mind, or not mind control, body double. There just doesn't seem to be a, a real combo deck that you can draft in this cube. It's just all about the midrange. If you get it, let me know, but the best kind of uh, reanimate effect is body double. And that's just not that good. It's not that efficient. You don't get to do anything broken on turn two. So, shoot, it's just hard to set up. And there aren't too many ways to enable getting a, a creature in your graveyard. There's no Entomb. You can get Baby Jace and discard from your hand, but yeah, it's just not all that exciting. So I like this 23. We've definitely got the power level to win games of magic. We've got some Planeswalkers, some some giant dragons and demons, uh, and just some, you know, good, efficient creatures all around. Ways to keep going. Ways to defend ourselves early. Some ramp. All right, looking good. All the boxes are checked. So, mana balance. One red source. 15. These are, oops, 14, rather. 14, 10, 2, 1. So we need one of each of those. 14 is a lot. I think we'll do pretty well here once we put in some of our non-basics. Lava Claw Reaches, is that one we really need? We probably don't want the Lava Claw Reaches when I look at it. It's hard enough to, you know, it comes in tapped. It's hard. It's going to be hard to get the, uh, the red mana, and we just don't need it to win. I'd rather have an untapped source. Colonnade for blue. Just about all of these have to come in for blue. That looks about right. So that gives us. A lot of blue sources. 11 blue sources for 14 blue cards. I guess uh, 12 blue sources and plenty of black as well. Seven black sources, eight. With just the two basic swamps. Is that enough? Yeah, because we only have three fetchable black sources. So we could run out of those and we'll just fetch the other colors when we need them and then we'll leave in one basic of each of these. We don't actually need basic mountain, maybe. Right, because we'll have one source we can fetch, another one, and how many ways to fetch the Blood Crypt? Two. That's tough. Yeah, I'll just leave it in, <laughs> why not? But I'm not certain that's correct. In fact, it's probably not. I'm just too lazy to really figure it out. What would we put in? Do we need another blue source if, if that's not going to work, or another black source? It seems like we have plenty of each. Turn two, Bitter Blossom can't be the hardest thing in the world. If we bring in something like Vampire Hexmage, we can take our, um, our mountain out and put in a swamp, for example. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. In fact, I'm still thinking about it here. Well, for that reason, let's just put in Lava Claw Reaches. Sure. <laughs> All right. Here's the deck. More of a fun-looking, kind of powerful control deck instead of the, the aggro deck. Well, no wonder it uh, didn't seem like quite enough lands. 
we're not playing enough cards yet. We need 17 here, so that should about do it. And we'll just add another island there since the Lava Claw Reaches kind of balances our black nicely. Round one. Cool start here. Bitter Blossom on turn two. We'll keep this. And we'd love to draw land. So for that reason, you don't really want to fetch turn one. You can play the fetch. Because it'll get an untapped thing. Um, shoot, maybe we do want to get something tapped. Because if we look at it, we've got... Hallowed Fountain to dig up. Yeah, that's close. In any case, we'll get to decide turn two. The uh, one reason not to play it would be because we know we want to play a two drop, and if we draw a land, we still want to draw lands, so we just wouldn't play the Flooded Strand yet. It's not going to be too big of a deal. And they're playing in the control deck, so taking life off of um, Hallowed Fountain is not going to be too bad if we want to go that route. Also, we only have two white cards, so we don't need to get white yet. Talking about Lingering Souls and Soren, Grim Nemesis. Wow, quite the decisions here. The Scry, too. Early Scries are always difficult. Okay, so we would have had to crack this anyway. I am going to get Hallowed Fountain and hope that life doesn't come back to bite us later. It is less time with Bitter Blossom, but we've got plenty of other cards to clear the way here. And we've got turn two Bitter Blossom on the play. There aren't, there, well, there isn't much in the way of like turn one ramp, to, or turn zero ramp, like a Mox to get it out on turn one. You'd need something like Dark Ritual, but <laughs> I don't think that that's in this cube. All right, red-blue, combo time. We missed out on a lot of these one-mana interaction spells. We don't have any one-mana spells. We're just playing a bunch of tapped lands. And we kind of got this out underneath any counter magic, so that's good news. Bad news that we're not drawing lands here. We just can't do anything. But we could into the royal, our own Bitter Blossom, late in the game. Cyclonic Rift, not so much, but into the royal does work. We do win this race if nothing happens for the rest of the game, but it's going to suck if we don't draw something to do. You take a little life investment in the beginning without getting much damage. But if your fairies survive, then you're starting to stack up two, then three, then four damage, um, while only taking one for those turns. There we go, we got our first little sting in, our first fairy bite. Opponent is pinging themselves again for red. Forked bolt, one and two. That'll get it. I mean, not much we can do about that. Let's see if they I don't want F6 here because they could play a creature that we want them to sack. Or just carefully consider the options. There we go, land. We don't have to discard. I'm starting to really regret taking that shock off Hallowed Fountain. You know, we'll still get there. They must just be holding up counter magic. That's all I can think of. So we're in a nice position if they can't just deal with Bitter Blossom. And they're playing red, so they could one for one trade with these fairy rogues, or maybe even two for one like they did that turn. Is it Charm? So they're not going to use that to ping our rogue. They're just going to draw some cards and discard two. Now that is card disadvantage, because it doesn't net them any cards and they use this. They get rid of Knight's Whisper and Hero's Downfall. 
and they don't play a land and we don't draw anything what the heck what a crazy deck let's just discard rune scarred demon we're never going to get to play it I mean, we just actually can't play anything else. We could def devour flesh ourselves to gain a life, but then, you know, it defeats the purpose of getting a creature out there to attack. Hopefully they commit something to the board, because our hand's really good at, you know, stopping threats, but it plays really poorly against control. Because, you know, the first threat we can put on the board is Bloodline Keeper. That gets countered. Then Teferi, maybe that gets killed. All right, nothing so far. Nothing yet. Pools, we'll just play that here. They've got our draw step. Are they going to they gonna take a look? I don't believe they're allowed to choose Fetid Pools with the um, Teferi. Oh, they don't want to do that even. Well, okay. Pestermite. Regular old unexciting Pestermite, huh? Maybe we steal Pestermite here. Oh, we can't steal it. It's too it costs too much. Fair enough. I'll tell you what we can do though devour it. I don't want them trading off with a fairy. I'd rather they gain one life than gain one life for the rest of the game. And that's the least tough creature we could we could ever kill with devour flesh. All right, tap out for something. Get Tamio. Tamio time. Icefall Regent. Another annoying one. It'll let us resolve Bloodline Keeper, so that's kind of cool. And then later we can Cyclonic Rift. Whoops. Just build up too many creatures for them to deal with. I imagine they'll be able to answer the keeper somehow which is too bad it was that or cyclonic rift the icefall regent but it's going to cost two more to use any disruption spell like that so it takes our whole turn to do that And only gets in two damage, so my thought is, if the Bloodline Keeper does survive this turn and stay stay on our side, then Cyclonic Rift will be good. They're splashing black. They've got black and red. It's probably just Grixis with a little more blue. Oh, come on. I hope they don't win the Clash. So Clash, we both reveal the top card, and then we can put it on the bottom or the top. And then you have to scroll through all this. I win the clash, nice, so I don't take three damage. And what are we gonna do about this lingering souls? I think we bottom it. That's silly, but land would be good. What do we have to deal with now? Just carefully paying mana. Bonfire of the Damned. Well, I'll be. This is not... <laughs> this is not doing so hot. All right. Let's just play Teferi. No, we can't really play Teferi. We'll have to jump with the Fairy Rogue. So if they have a removal spell for a fairy rogue, we lose. Or we take our whole turn and bounce Icefall Regent. We gotta play a little more greedily than that. 
I'm just pass here. We hope to jump with the fairy rogue. We just got blown out by a combination of not really drawing lands on time and a bunch of like three for ones, <laughs> which never helps. And by three for ones, I mean, you know, effectively a one one flyer is one for us. Here it goes Inferno Titan. Nope, not Inferno Titan. Rakdos Return. Yeah. That kills us. We can do better. This deck can do better. It might want 18 lands, to be fair. And then, I don't know, some of this stuff just isn't as good. Especially on the play. Inquisition's not insane. Yeah, let's go ahead and add one more land. Now we're flooded. Now we're flooded strand. Keep it though. That shock did end up mattering, although unclear if we could have won anyway. All right, let us get our stuff. See what they get first, I guess. And we will get fetid pools, I think. I don't mind drawing that later. I don't really want to draw island here, though. Leave that in our deck for now. And then we can play out blood crypt. Not anticipating needing to play into the royal this turn. And just not going so well for us here. Adding that one island made all the difference. Apparently. Alright, so what else do we have to fetch here? I think we're kind of out of all our special lands. We could still fetch fetid pools. We don't need to though, I'll just get a Well, there might not be much left to fetch. Get another swamp, maybe. Since we have plenty of blue in hand. And when we draw Fetid Pools, we'll just cycle it, because we have plenty of land. We have Nicol Bolas land at this point. Runescar Demon. Um, sure, so it's turn four, they're missing a land drop. And that makes me want to play Dungeon Geists. And they might have some counter magic or whatever, but they'd have that anyway. Sensor, ouch. I thought we had sensor. That's what you get for playing in leagues. You don't get to benefit from the information. It's no longer a singleton format. Well, that is just kind of upsetting. Crystal Shard. Can't even negate it. We could have negated it if we played our land here. Um, pay two life. You know what? No, we're not going to pay two life. And we can into the royal on their turn. Sensor's already gone. And then we can negate it on the way back down, although I'm not even sure we care about Crystal Shard. It's just the only thing we can do here. It's too bad. We're not putting them up to eight cards. Mana leak, all right. Not the most exciting game. That's how control goes. Dungeon Geists. We could have. We should have just waited on Dungeon Geists. Read the bones. Get that out of there. Don't want them drawing two cards. And they won't have mana left over to fight Rune Scar Demon. So this this should be it, right? And if they return Rune Scar Demon, it gives us another. Tutor. So I'm going to get Nickel Bolas. And if we can resolve that, that'll be great. They don't even know it's coming because they don't get to see when you get to choose any card in your deck. 
They usually just don't get to see what it is. All right, here we go. Kill our demon. Serum visions. Yeah, they're going to try to find that land. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Oh, that's so... That's so nifty here, because if we hit a creature off Nicol Bolas, then they get to bounce it back to their own hand. And they didn't hit a land. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to exile from their hand instead of hitting a counter magic off of Nicol Bolas or a creature that they can bounce back because we don't have an, an extra mana. And they're just gonna they're gonna say, okay, that's fair. Um, cool. What else can we do here? Luteril core kind of works with the reanimation strategy. It's not really the direction I want to go here. Inquisition. They have enough cheap counter magic that I like. I like that. Take a land out on the draw. Spectre is pretty cool. Is that better than anything else? Threads, maybe. Threads just doesn't steal anything reasonable. It's not really a control card. Devour Flesh is fine. Uh, Hex Mage is decent. Oh, I like this change. Wow. Exciting hand. No basics. We'll fetch for a basic, though off the marsh flats. Steal our draw step. A true modern player. See what you got over there. Get that sensor out of here. Well, we've got Bonfire of the Dam that'll never amount to anything and a way to kill our Planeswalker. Not too good of a hand, I'd have to say, overall. They've got perfect mana, but I'm going to get rid of this downfall. We'll have to, you know, we'll have to worry about the crystal shard when the time comes. Hmm. We're going to get blood crypt. There it is. The time has come. So they played their island and crystal shard. So we know two of their cards. This turn, we're definitely going for the relic. And charge it up on their turn. Sometimes I forget to do that, so don't let me forget. They just take a while. I go off and think about something else for a bit and then miss it. That's super annoying, Koth. Yes, they always do that. They pick the one with summoning sickness. You can actually check here, like I'm right-clicking my swamp. It says newly controlled. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll take it. Look, we need all the help we can get. Um, we're going to add white. Let's add white. I'm too happy about that. Three, four. It's kind of cool. They can't activate Crystal Shard this turn. They can do it on, on their turn. So we don't have extra mana for the Sphinx to keep it in play before they draw. I'm not going to count on them not seeing that line or not having the stop set, because they have, heck, they have our stop on our draw set. A uh, step, rather. So let's just... Let's just plan on Nicol Bolas next turn. We can play Hollowed Fountain and get that. Should we save one of our spirits from Crystal Shard? No, I think it's more important to get Nicol Bolas down. Nicol Bolas kills Koth. And they haven't played their Reef yet. They've still... Oh, they've got Bonfire of the Damned. Well, I'll 
be. We didn't really have a good play no matter what here. I think the best play would have just been to not play the second half of this. But Nickel Bolas should be able to lock this up. Minus four, so down to three loyalty, killing Koth, and we know they have Shivan Reef in hand. Yep, yep, yep. I'm looking right at it too. Crazy. Uh, red? Sure. Pay the life. Don't counter this, please. Yes, they didn't counter it. Redirect to cost, so they don't use that. They sent us a message. I'm really going to get my planeswalk every game? I hope so. Next question. This is the, this is the good this is the good stuff right here. I got the good stuff in play. Perfect mana. This is why Coalition Relic is so good. I mean, it's what was this? Our turn five, turn five Nickel Bolas. Good stuff. All right, let's see if they're gonna think about this for a while or what they're gonna do. Oh, they're doing something. They played a, an island, so maybe they've got. I don't know. Oh, you know what? They're gonna they're gonna lava ball us. Oh, Una, Queen of the Fae. Sure, I think. I think that's fine. Keep that keep that gal tapped over there. Would be one option. We could discard their last card. We know what it is. I think our best bet is to plus two first. Lash out. Doesn't, oh, I love this. What are they gonna say? Every game, every game, every flipping game we played, we're gonna get Nickel Bulls. Let's clash here. Uh, I can't even tell if we won the clash. They win the clash. They've got tidings. Um, we're gonna put sensor on the bottom because no one needs any, no one needs any of that sensor nonsense. And then we'll play consecrated sphinx. Because when they go for tidings, oh shoot, we're going to draw a million cards. It's not going to work out that well for us though, is it? Because we need to pay one on our upkeep to, to keep it. So let's do this instead. We need to stop Una from killing us, play this, and then we'll have plenty of mana next turn. Okay, good deal. And they do have a stop on their upkeep, so they're at least playing that right. Pretty gosh darn lame, getting Nickel Bolas every turn. I know. They should have put both versions of Nickel Bolas. This one's more exciting now. Four abilities. Wow. And we can just kill... Uh, what are they going to get? We can just kill Una, so we don't have to worry about getting milled by that. And having to deal with 300 of the Fae. I don't know what color they'd choose, though. It's nice to be three colors against Una. All right, don't pass here. We want to put that charge counter on. What color? What color is best? Doesn't really matter. I'll get blue. We probably want to use blue here. Now, Una's kind of dealt with here. I want to start getting rid of their hand. The exile is so powerful here. Let's see what we can get. Haven't we already dealt with this uh, Shivan Reef? Maybe not. Where did we? Where did Shivan Reef? Even, oh, it's it's been out in play. It's probably been in play forever. 
So we just don't know what they have. We've exiled a swamp somehow. I guess Nicol Bolas does exile. Exile a ton of lands. Play Shell Dock, see what we get. Uh, we should be able to have that. Maybe they're going to try to bounce Dungeon Geists, but not too worried about that. They're just struggling here. Ooh, murderous cut. It's a little late for Bitter Blossom. I don't think that's going to turn the tide this game. Then. You know what? I'm not even so worried about getting Consecrated Sphinx into play. Let's just have them discard another card. See if that works. One option they have is bouncing their own Una and replaying it, but that's a lot of mana. And they don't have much left up to do all that. All right, what color do they choose? They're gonna, they're definitely gonna miss. Watch this. No, they got something. They got Devour Flesh. Does it exile? Exiles the top X cards. X is one, and they, they hit it. <laughs> what a monster. You got it. Well. Five. Not even worth attacking here. Well, maybe it is. We need to kill them eventually. And if they're just chumping, that's kind of crazy because they should have probably attacked that into Nicol Bolas. Now we're just getting more damage in. I don't know. Dreadbore. Shoot. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Nicol Bolas. Well, hopefully we can win off the back of this Sphinx. I mean, it got us a lot of value. Uh, mm. And we will be able to murderous cut the Una before it decks us. I hope. As long as they tap out here. Yes, good deal. Choosing blue this time, maybe black again. Dude, what do they what do they got? Bloodline Keeper and Consuming Vapors. Not too bad. Oh wow, Soren. I'll take it. Now let's get blue. We're definitely going to use that. Kill Una before they can bounce it back with Crystal Shard. This might tilt them off too. Let's get ready. Nope, <laughs> not yet. And then we have just enough mana up to start drawing a bunch off of Consecrated Sphinx. I like Soren too. I like them both. And they don't have to use it. And if they don't use it and they're tapped out, we can use Coalition Relic. Otherwise, we just can't afford to use the Relic. Here we go. Yeah. Always yield, but we don't necessarily want to always um, draw. It's nice that it's a May. Otherwise, it, it would just be drawing too many cards. To get to get in the late game and they're gonna let us draw a couple more yeah I'm down for that bury your opponent in card advantage you kind of build your own tidings with this consecrated Sphinx not to mention it's only one mana more and it's already way better than tidings like we've already drawn four off it uh, Cool. Counter magic. Yeah. Shoot, now I don't even care if they use Crystal Shard to bounce it. Jeez, they're gonna mill us. Um, if we if we actually draw this many cards, we might be in danger of getting milled. And they should have targeted us. No. <laughs> that would be would actually draw less cards. 
better than better than what's his face um the demon dude not Razaketh. there's a bunch of them now slipping my mind anyway let's draw some cards that's about enough for now right i mean we've got stuff to do we can draw more next turn i don't want to discard to hand size next turn that's kind of the one thing I'm trying to avoid here all right they're gonna let us get away with this Five, let's get Flooded Strand out there. Cast a Tamio. Tamio is nice here. It can cut them off of, uh, they're trying to make blue here. It can cut them off of black, and it can keep Crystal Shard tapped down. Nice. And they've had enough. All right, that's control. That's how we, how we get there. Just get Nickel Bolas every game. Hello, round two versus Psychorax 6, or V1, whatever it is, V8, and a fine hand. A couple fetches to fuel our Delve, Delver deck, except this time we're the Delver. Don't even do that. I hope <laughs> Threads isn't good against them, because that's what they're getting. Maybe we should put that in our main deck, Inquisition. Something to do early. It's probably better than threads. Although, to be fair, if we had it instead of threads here, they would have just taken that. We want to get, well, we already have Blood Crypt, so we can hand Hollowed Fountain in hand. So what can we really get? Ah, I didn't mean to play that. Delays the decision a bit. Oh, you gotta be kidding me with that. Um, this is why we should have fetched turn one. That's embarrassing. That's really bad. Yeah, that's real bad. It's almost enough for murderous cut, and it would have been enough if we had um, if we had played correctly. costs one to cycle, so that would kind of help, but doesn't end up helping. Yeah, yeah, you got your stupid mouse. You can have your mouse. What is going to be good against this? I don't even know. Steal a mouse. Should get a blue here. Doesn't really matter what we get. I'll get a blue. Yeah, I could go for a blue. Kill the copy because it's harder for them to get a copy back. Just saves us a bunch of damage. They'll do it again. I know about these pack rat decks. We had one chance to, <laughs> to get this stupid rat, and we missed it. Oh, that's kind of good. That was the best draw, maybe. They'll still get a rat, but we're kind of beginning the extermination. Oh, they're, no, they're going to... Well, ooh, that's pretty good. That plays well against our stuff. If we had one more mana out, we could steal something here. 
I wonder what they'll sack. They've got to sack the messenger. It makes the most sense here. Comes back stronger. Not to mention we just lost four life in that exchange. And gain two back. So they get in for six here. Scatter's looking pitiful. Nickel Bolas, great. If only he had a relevant ability, but he just doesn't. We have to play Silumgard here to survive. Let's take... Let's take a pack rat. And then they can't really attack us. They could attack with both. We could kill one pack rat. They could just attack with messenger. We kill that with Silmgar. Kind of awkward turn for them. I wish these pack rats had death touch so they could trade with each other no matter what. And if they just kill Silmgar, then I don't know what to tell you. That would be pretty bad. Are we going to pull this out somehow? I mean, we have Nicol Bolas in play. We could counter their next play. Tell you what, let's go ahead and devour flesh. I don't care about their life total, but I want to keep their mouse population to a minimum. And they like their mouse population really nice and high. So we'll probably discard Scatter the Winds to our own pack rat. Because they still won't be able to attack with their pack rats. And we'll, hmm, then we have the option of trading both pack rats for one. No, they just can't attack here. And they're just going to wait on their pack rats. Who's got the pack rats now? We need red. Let's tap too quickly. So what does this get? I mean, do we want to attack their hand? It's just more pack rats. It just kills two pack rats if we attack their hand. We could kill a pack rat. These things will be four fours next turn. Yeah, let's, let's plus nickel bolus. get a two for one instead of a, a potential two for one well yeah it'd only be a one for one with the plus two because taking a card from your deck is not as good as taking it from their hand or their uh what do we get night veil specter and murderous red cap i'll keep this for pack rat fuel right so we'll just get a for sure two for one here they get another pack rat so they're down to one and as long as they don't reanimate their whole graveyard, then we should be in decent shape after our early misplay of letting them have a pack rat. This was the perfect murderous cut hand. It was like turn, turn to murderous cut hand. And then I misclicked on Hallowed Fountain. Relive that. But we would have been facing all different threats if we didn't let them have a pack rat. They would have played out their Night Vale Spectre and their Messenger and Grey Merchant. Like, that might have been a harder game to win than this game against a bunch of pack rats. Oh god, <laughs> haste, pitiless horde. I think we're fine, though. Obviously, we don't trade um, such wise. 
And they're all coming after us. But they do kill our pack rat this way. This is actually fine. We kill two pack rats this way. You'll see how the damage ends up here. They're down to one pack rat. We only take two. Nice. Well, we could exile that raid card from their hand. Or kill their final pack rat. Pretty sure we need to to deal with that card in their hand because Silmgar does not block it. And no more pack rats to save our lands for. The next task is to find something from their deck that we can use. And they'll start build, building their pack rat army again. Oh boy. Sphinx, that's a good one. So let us plus Nicol Bolas. Hopefully we can find removal or something nice to cast. Or another blocker even would be fine. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play Thoughtseize. <laughs> They're just going to discard it anyway. Not the best thing we could have drawn there, but I am going to play our land out because we could draw on their turn. We could draw counter magic and leave both our blockers back because we could be facing down. Ouch. Okay. We could be facing down uh, three, three pack rats if they didn't use that card ultimate price. That's a nice one for them to have had kind of screws us up still, puts us back in the same place we were. Can we get something better than Thoughtseize? Phyrexian Arena. That doesn't do it. Even the ultimate's kind of embarrassing here. It plays well against Packrat because they can't activate in response to, to keep a pack rat in play. Should have done this earlier. Wait, no, I meant to do it with kicker. <laughs> Obviously, come on. Ridiculous. Oh well, I'm sure we didn't need that card anyway. We have a 13 loyalty Nickel Bolas in play. How could we lose? The misplayer into the Royal. I mean, it should have two options when you cast it. We just I just clicked the wrong one, I guess. In my haste. Can we find something good to do here? That'd be great. What possible response could they have to this? Make a pack rat? Maybe. Sheldock Isle's a good one. Cold Steel Heart, sure. You know what? That's fine. And we'll do it for blue. Can be a lot of pack rats here. I should have I should have minus nickel bolus. Um, let's get. I don't even know anymore. Let's get Tamio. Because next turn we'll have to use nickel bolus ultimate. The pack rats really shouldn't be big enough to to kill us here, because they won't be able to activate it twice. But it is equal to the number of rats they control. So if they, I don't know. If they play two rats somehow, that'd be pretty good. Thank goodness. All right, no more messing around. We're going to exile all the rats. Nice. And we're going to play Tamio. 
I really can't select this stuff, can I? Uh, we should be there. That should finally let us attack. All right, they've had enough. That's enough planeswalkers to fight through. Well, that was that was pulling teeth. We didn't really do that the best we could have. We got there in the end. Uh, Inquisition. Inquisition is going to be good. What else is going to be good? Scatter's good. Threads is is fine against that. Devour Flesh, surprisingly good. Into the Royal is a, not Into the Royal, Cyclonic Rift is a reason to kill the um, the original pack rat. Sometimes you want to kill the token, sometimes you want to kill the original. But if you kill the original, then Cyclonic Rift just kills all the rest. Uh, what's not as good? Teferi is fine, but not as exciting. Yeah, this is fine. This is decent. Cool hand. Love these fetch lands. It makes hands like this uh, a lot smoother. Play our fetch on turn one. Try to get that right. And do we have a godless shrine? That would be the perfect land to get here. But I don't think we do check real quick yeah we're looking at hallowed fountains and blood crypt but yeah we're not sure what we're gonna draw so I'm just gonna leave it be to <laughs> draw another blue of course we'll li we'll leave it be so we can be sure of what we're gonna play Inquisition shoot um we need white and black I guess I'll get Blood Crypt here. And then we have five white sources to draw into. This is kind of annoying. And they probably don't have a three mana spell, so Inquisition is not is not that good either. Oh well, let's get let's just get planes. Right, Hallowed Fountain, we already have plenty of blue. Let's just get our planes. Play Lingering Souls. What an awkward draw. I'm singing the praises of these fetch lands, but it's still not good enough. We need one more fetch land. You know, I'm not picky, I'll just take any black source. Oh, they did have something. Maybe they found it later. Interesting. Well, let's us uh, do plenty of damage. Oh man. They cannot get a break here. They didn't hit a fifth land or a second color even. Although they were mono black. Is that, am I crazy about that? I remember a lot of black spells in game one. They might just not be interested in in spending their one for one removal on one one flying spirit tokens, but they could just have a lot of that in their hand. Who knows? Who knows what we have to negate here, but more than likely it'll be some big creature. that we can steal next turn. So we're pretty well set up as long as we draw any land next turn. Ultimate price. Like, I see what you're going for there. Maybe we could negate that. We counter this one. I knew we were saving negate for a reason. We don't need to lose three life if we don't have to. And this keeps the pressure down. Just the absolute worst thing we could have drawn here. Hallowed Fountain actually does nothing. It, it lets us cast Mind Control next turn. And I was right about the one for one removal. 
But they are drawing two cards a turn, so it's not even a big waste. They're still at seven cards. Come on, play, play Grave Titan or something good. Yeah. I'm going to discard Inquisition here. It's the least likely to have any effect on the game after, you know, by the time we'll be able to cast it. Polluted Delta. Wow, aren't we in good company? Let's get just regular old Blood Crypt. I was going to get regular old Swamp, but I think Blood Crypt is nicer in case we draw something we're interested in. And why not? Soren, Soren's a good dude. He's a good guy. And we're going to pressure their life total as much as possible, getting Celestial Colonnade and protecting it with the spirit. They can probably kill the spirit off, but that's fine too. That is fine. I don't want to see a haste creature here like the 5-3 in addition to a removal spell if they dash that thing out. Oh gosh, what is this? Seven black. Discarding our entire hand. What? Fatal push. No problem. Don't even worry about it. All right. Jace. I'm still going to plus Soren here. Because... Got another Jace. We can flashback Lingering Souls. Draw some of our own cards. I know they have a million cards, too. So I don't feel too bad about giving them cards if we have to later. Why did we draw land off of Soren? I really want this to do more damage to them. Why can't we reveal a, a six drop? What do we have? Reveal Nickel Bolas. That would be ideal. Runescar Demon's already gone. But we can get Sphinx, we can get Silumgar, Murderous Cut. Mind Control is gone. And this is loss of life, so it can't hit our Planeswalkers. I always forget to level up my things on the turn I cast it. Maybe they'll do the same. But if they don't have anything else to do, they should just level this up a couple times. Or once. There we go. Cyclonic Rift is so good here. Wow. We could do it at instant speed after they draw. Right? Finally, we get to use the, the draw step. Yay, a swamp. Should have done Jace first. I wonder if they'll block here. They probably will. No, they don't. All right, this is going to be fun. Who cares if they draw? They lose a life on their draw step. They're playing mono black, so they can't really interfere with this in any way. <laughs> good, good riddance to all this stuff. So they lost the life. They can't really redeploy all of it for eight mana. Maybe they'll get something down there enough to not have to discard. Yeah, not too hard to do that here. They'll have us discard, discard an island. Is that it? Just Liliana and the assassin. Scatters a nice touch. Um, I'm going to do it right this time. I'm going to plus first. I'm going to use Jace first. Right, so we wouldn't have revealed anything there. And then I'm going to plus... Oh, come on. Come 
I'm assuming Vapor is not even that good here. Shell Duck Isle, what's this going to get? That'll get Nicol Bolas for sure. Sphinx? Tamiyo is another good one. Each player discards a card. Ah, let's do this. You know, I was really hoping Soren would <laughs> would actually get a card at some point, but uh, no such luck. I get that we're flipping Lily here. Should be fine. Because they can't really get something good back with Liliana, and we don't care about the discard. So it's just a free zombie for them. I thought we really locked it up with that Cyclonic Rift, but our next turns just haven't been exciting. We've gotten zero damage in so far with Soren total. Or even <laughs> life loss. Alright, they're returning they're returning the um I can't even click on it. What the heck? Okay, a little lag there. Oh my goodness, look at the text. Um, sure, they're returning this guy. Whatever. And Giralf's messenger. Shall we counter this messenger? I don't think we have to worry too much about it. But at the same time, they can just sacrifice it. And getting a 3-3 land doesn't actually accomplish too much. Spectre's fine. Alright, it's about time Soren did something. Soren will have to kill Bloodline Keeper here. We can't afford to... Well, we could actually use Tamiyo on the Keeper. Ooh, they're really getting low. They're getting real low with that arena. That makes it tempting to plus Soren again to hit Nicol Bolas. And we could hit something good this turn. Certainly we have three draws, but they'll gain some life here too. Yeah, let's have him lose a creature. Even if it does gain him two or three life. Murderous cut, perfect. All right, I'm gonna roll the dice here. Plussing Soren first. I'm feeling lucky, not too bad. Let's just do it all here. Cast, and what we're going to tap down is the Bloodline Keeper, so that doesn't get to untap. Play a strand. Level this thing up once. Murderous cut costs one, so that's no problem. Yeah, get an island here. In fact, that's a good reason just to, just to play the relic. All right. Good deal. We'll hold these spirits back on defense. They can discard an island. They'll take it to three. They better draw something good, because we're getting Nicol Bolas next turn for sure. <laughs> I hope. We draw four cards next turn, maybe more. I don't want this Night Veil Spectre to hit us, even though they can't cast any spells that aren't black the turn they get it. Nice, so we got there. Another match to control. Hello, keeping this hand in the finals. 
think we start with delta and get a, I don't know, hallowed fountain. It's always been a little difficult to get two colors at once. Blood crypt, we don't need that right away. And we don't have, uh, we don't have, what's it called? We don't have a white black source to fetch. That's okay. Hallowed Fountain will be good enough. It's something we don't need to shock ourselves with right away. And since we do have plenty of blue black, I'm just going to cycle the fetid pools here if we have to, or if we don't have to, into the royal. A little dig deeper towards our red. We don't need double white for anything, so I guess the man is fine here. Okay. Bitter Blossom, you're late. They're going to negate it, but they can't censor it. We could, um, yep, <laughs> wow. I hate being right. I thought we had negate in, in our pool. It's so unfair. All right, now you got to play a creature. Ah, the control mirrors, they keep keep vexing me. Jace, does that resolve? He does. All right. There we go. Our finisher. Both our finishers. White, blue. I wonder what nonsense they're up to. Just ramp into Ugin or something. We'll have to hold up the gate for a while here. We're into the Royal on Hedron Archive. That'd be kind of funny. Well, you can't do that when they have two other mana open. Selfless Spirit, okay. It's another one we can't really use um, into the Royal on because they could just sacrifice it. Keep Jace alive for a while. All right, kind of doing it. That's just about a perfect draw here because it blocks the selfless spirit and they could counter it, but we could counter that. We could counter the counter because negate is so good. Yeah, it's looking good. What do we need? We need red eventually for Nicol Bolas. We'll get Mountain off of Soul Scarred Demon. Seems about right. Sower of Temptation. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be great. Right? So they steal Bloodline Keeper and they attack with Selfless Spirit. And then we use the oldest trick in the book. It's called Cyclonic Rift. Actually, let's use Into the Royal. There's not much else we could use that on. So we'll get the Keeper back. They can't tap it in response. The old one-for-one one here. <laughs> Into the Royal kills Selfless Spirit, but also bounces that thing back to their hand. That's a good, that's a good draw. But to be fair, we've drawn four cards off of Jace. So we're doing okay. Lowers the shields for negate. But I think I'm fine with that. At least we'll get a vampire off it. And then we have so many ways of dealing with the sower. Cyclonic Rift, Consuming Vapors, Soren, and whatever we draw off Jace. Oh no. Ugin time. Minus six. We shouldn't have we shouldn't have cast Soren. Don't do it. Elish Norn, that's not too bad. I can deal with Elish Norn. It's a good reason not to tap Bloodline Keeper though. Yeah, why not? Make a vampire. <laughs> Make a zero zero vampire. Consuming vapors. Talk about an efficient answer to this. 
Get wrecked. Does that prompt a concession? We've gotten we've got two planeswalkers and a an effective planeswalker. Okay. They say nah, we'll we'll, we'll play it out. Respect. Reaches, and this time I'm really afraid of dying to Ugin or something like that, so we're gonna hold up negate. Very few creatures can turn the tides here. Elish Norn would be a good example of a creature that just kind of wins on its own, but it wasn't good against this board, unfortunately for them. Frost Titan's pretty good. They're gonna tap this, but We'll just make a vampire in response. Now, Cyclonic Rift would counter, or it would get countered by Frost Titan's passive. <laughs> and they're gonna, they ran it into Consuming Vapors. Shoot, easy to forget about. You get spoiled online with these effects because like if, if I forgot about it, Magic Online reminds me, it forces me to remember it. So you never have to put a die on top of your library or something to remember these triggers. Easy mode. At the same time, it's unforgiving. There's no going back once you've made a decision or a misclick. But I like it. Let's put in Spectre and take out Threads. Just getting a card is nice. Forcing them to spend removal. The body double is also kind of cool. Inquisition doesn't capture too many cards. I mean, it captures things like negate, so that makes it better. Bitter Blossom is good. Tamiyo, mind control is good. Teferi, Teferi is good in control. So what, what's the weak link here? The weak link, we want efficient answers to like individual creatures. I'll take out Rune Scarred Demon. Yeah, I don't want to take out another land down to 16. We just want to hit our land drops. I mean, goodness knows this hand would be pretty bad if we took out this island. But it's good enough with two lands to hope to draw more lands. Ooh. Whenever you cast a white spell, this card is bad, I think. It's like the Shrine of Burning whatever, Shrine of Burning Rage, but that card's actually good. Shrine of Loyal Legions. I don't know, just, uh, I guess eventually it gets a lot of 1-1 one, one colorless Mur artifact creature tokens. So that's, a, that's something. Now we don't have double black yet. Um, they also don't have that many white spells. It's good in the late game. And we can just into the royal it in a turn or so. While they have, well, I don't have three mana up. Reset it. So far, so good. Just four mana doing nothing. I don't really want to fight three, even three Mur here, so I'll I'll wait on that. Shoot, well maybe now we have to. No, because they'll counter it. Gosh, how ridiculous is this? I'm just gonna use consuming vapors on them. Otherwise, we discard something, and it's probably Bloodline Keeper or Consuming Vapors. It means they can't really play a creature this next turn. Because we'll have that in the, <laughs> in the graveyard. Oh, well. S 
Staff of Nin. Well, we lose to that, too. Although, that's one we can enter the royal here. I want to get this into our graveyard, so we should cast it. Come on, land. They can ping us for one, but they'll have to spend six mana to get it out again. Come on, that's not even a, close to being a land. Get out of here, Bitter Blossom. Just discard that. It's not even close. All right, here it is again. Or they're just draw four with the tidings. Not a problem. Now they have to discard to hand size, and we still can't draw land. Unreal. kill anything but <laughs> we can only cast two spells in our hand spike tail drake i guess we have to counter that we could have killed it with murderous cut kill this with murderous cut instead doesn't matter what we get rid of because we don't have any way to interact with our graveyard all right rock on we have a, a play and they're gonna negate it so Teferi would have been much better there also yeah I started to regret it anyway they could have activated their shrine and killed Tamyo, no matter what we tap down there. Shoot. That's a lot of... Alright, this shrine's getting uh, scary. It's getting a little... a little worrisome. Alright, we'll just play Teferi on their turn, because we can. Maybe... We ambush their mentor that way. Of course, they get that extra card off the staff of win. Sword of Light and Shadow. Now we're definitely not ambushing this stupid mentor. It's going to be a at least a five-five. Um, that's good to see, at least. There's no way they play around Teferi here. So we'll let them hit. But we'll kill the Mentor. Or try to. Trade with the Mentor, because Staff of Nin gets us. And then they can get it back. They can get it back with Sword of Light and Shadow. Or get back Spike Tail Drake. Can't steal the monk. Can't play anything really, because they can counter just about anything in our hand. Pretty close to conceding this this uh nonsense game here. I think they've got it. All of the cards aren't going to do much against Sora. They're drawing two cards a turn. They've got a million things off of, yeah, <laughs> off of the shrine. I've seen enough. We need a better draw, uh, but Inquisition of Kozilek's going to be at least good against this deck. Hex Mage might even be good. The Reds also... Could be fine here, and I don't really like consuming vapors as well as, well as it worked in game one. It's just not interactive enough, and against a bunch of tokens, it's just embarrassing. Devour Flesh can catch 
an opponent like this off guard. But it's still not insanely good. Hex Mage can remove the counters from that shrine. Yeah, looks good. Alright, game three in the finals. We'll play first, always where you want to be, and let's see if they can beat a turn to Bitter Blossom. That's what they're up against. Let's get a shock land into play, the least life we have to pay for this nonsense. And which one do we want? Hallowed Fountain. No, we need the black one, of course. So let's get Blood Crypt here. Yes. It doesn't get double blue. So actually, Fetid Pools is probably correct. Yeah. All right. I'm convinced. Bitter Blossom. Land would be nice, though. Especially Swamp. And they've got their turn to Token Maker. We've got our turn to Token Maker. Yeah, swamp would have been the best, but I guess this is also passable. Ooh, Relic. That means we're going to have an early God Pharaoh. Because we haven't missed our land drop yet. And Jace should keep us on track. Oh dear. Oh my. Um, okay. They can counter the relic. I really don't want them to do that because the god pharaohs are key to victory here. And they can't really counter this. They could sacrifice the drake. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Start the damage. How did they gain life again? Oh, by sacking the creature. Right. So we don't want to run into negate with the relic, but it's not the worst thing. And I guess they can't just they can't even hold it up here. I like that. We're just going to draw more cards over the course of the game with Jace if we plus it here. Hmm. Five, six, seven. I guess since we're going to be doing Relic here, and not using the mana right away. We should just uh, bring in Blood Crypt tapped. It's a little loose if we have to Murderous cut this turn, but we can always Cyclonic Rift. Um, the only time Murderous cut doesn't really work is if they equip Sword of Light and Shadow to some creature that so we can't Murderous cut it later. But the first time they do that, we can Cyclonic Rift, so it's not too bad. And now they will hold Negate up, so that... That is annoying. We just might not play Nicol Bolas here. So we don't have to run into that. Wait till they tap some mana. What do we want? Black, since we'll play Liliana Spectre instead. Assuming we don't draw something better to do. All right, that'll get a card. Get a planes. I don't mind running our squadron into our fairy squadron, liter literal fairy squadron here. Three, three power and toughness worth of fairies. Because we have some removal to back it up. Yeah, all right, Nicol Bolas, we'll, we'll wait until the shields are down. Oh boy. Snapcaster? Really? Oh 
<laughs> what? What's going on? Alright. Look at these old dudes. Never seen these tokens before, but awesome mirror finish on the on the, the face, I guess. If that's its face. Yeah, murderous cut this thing. One, two, three, four. That holds up Oh shoot, we need one more. I guess that still holds up Cyclonic Rift here if we absolutely need it. Problem with Cyclonic Rift? Yeah, I'm gonna use it here. Because three, four, five, six, we still have Nicol Bolas next turn, and if they want to re-equip to another Murr, they have to spend all their mana so they can't have negate for our next turn. All right, they really did it. They really went all out here. You got us. So they're going to hit us. So Jace survives. They gain three. Like, this This isn't the best sword out there. They gain three and return a creature. So Spike-tailed Jake, uh, Drake comes back. Spike-tailed Jake. That's probably his name, Jake. Um, anyway. Sure. So, black, red, blue. One, two, three, four. I guess we should have done this first. But let's take a quick look at their hand with Inquisition. Grab that spike tail Drake. Angel of Sanctions is nice. Staff of Nin is nice. Um, let's discard at least something. Or exile it, rather. And they can keep Angel of Sanctions. I guess. What do we get? Yeah, so they've got Angel of Sanctions left. And we can pressure their life. Four. Dungeon Geist is pretty good against uh, the Mur token over there. And our life's not low enough that we really have to worry about all this. We should have Inquisitioned first to make sure that the coast was clear for Nicol Bolas, but I think it's fine either way. I'm not even sure what they get back here. Us and Jace. Yeah, I don't mind trading off the Fairy Rogue. Maybe I do, actually. Seven. It's attacking Jace. I'm not even going to use Jace next turn. Maybe I will. All right, I'll trade off here. I could just minus it again. I'm trading one Bitter Blossom token for a card and potentially a, a life next turn if it's attacking. All right, and that's Nicol Bolas at uh, eight loyalty, unless they just scoop him up here, which they do, not too surprising. Oh no. Good thing about dungeon geists. It is not black or white. Then what? Then we probably play out to ferry to block. Right, because they equip they re-equip the sword to the mur. And that gives them kind of an attack here. no idea what they drew. What's an RXL zone? We delved away polluted delta and devour flesh earlier. And they're not attacking. 
Smart. Oh no, now we can't play Teferi. What was I thinking? What was I even thinking? I was thinking I really want this charge counter on the Coalition Relic. That's what I was thinking. Nice. Uh, blue. I like blue. White would have been better. But what, what are you going to do? Threads this thing. I could try countering it or something, I don't know. But they probably let it happen. I don't want them to interfere with any of our plans from here on out, so Teferi lets us attack worry-free. And we could even pay for it here. Pathing the Dungeon Geists, no. Don't do that to us, man. Um, I get some black here. Oh, so we're just dead to the angel, nearly. Yeah, no, we are. We are dead to the angel. Not going to claim I played this perfectly. That was a good card for them to have left over. The problem is, we don't have a blocker for the angel, and then the bitter blossom kills us. And that is a bad problem to have. Oh well. Nothing for it here. This is game three, right? I think this is game three. It might be game two. Hard to tell. Unless you really want to dig through things. Five, ten, yeah, it looks like this is game three, so it was nice knowing you. That's the trouble with control. There's so many decisions that I feel like we could probably have won this game if we played it a little differently. I even get Snapcaster on the on the uh, path if they if they want, but they have to do it now. They don't need to, they can just pass the turn. I mean, full information. But they'll do it anyway. Ouch, I mean, surprisingly good Angel of Sanctions. The fact that it gets any non-land permanent. Uh, sure, we can grab another land and Farewell. We didn't even get them that low, to be fair. Turn two, Bitter Blossom, and then they kind of just kept us under control. So thanks for watching. Nice little tournament here with a pretty good deck, but got beaten by some nonsense in, in white-blue.